Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be sharing my afterthoughts following a recent discussion that I had with Athena Walker about the differences between schizoids and psychopaths. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to link it above and also below in the description. I found Athena Walker to be a very engaging and amusing talker and I discovered that we have some interesting similarities, but also some very pronounced differences. Before I get into our similarities and differences, I want to make the point that with psychopathy, it's been very misrepresented in the media. And a lot of people, when they think of it, they conjure up images of evil killers and people that go around conning people. However, Athena Walker, through her work, goes into the neurological basis of psychopathy, which is different from the stereotypes. She talks about psychopathy as being an innate, um, as having an innate component. And this is due to a mutation of the oxytocin receptors. What this means is that psychopaths have an inability to process the hormone oxytocin oxytocin is known as the love hormone or the bonding hormone it influences emotional responses it facilitates connection between people and it's involved in behaviors such as trust empathy and also bonding in relationships so psychopaths have an inability to emotionally bond with other people and also a lack of emotion. Athena Walker breaks a lot of these stereotypes about psychopathy, which seems to be based around bad behavior. However, because a lot of the studies, the majority of the studies of psychopaths, the vast majority of studies on psychopathy have been conducted on inmates in jail. This really does bias the perception of what psychopathy is. So that's an important point to make in regard to why psychopathy is portrayed so badly in the media. With schizoids, we can also have a difficulty in connecting with our emotions. However, this isn't something that's inborn. This is a consequence of an adaptive response to inadequate nurturing and or misattunement with our primary caregiver. There's a number of reasons why this might occur. I'm not going to go into all of those details now. As a consequence of this, we form defense mechanisms and this can cause us to detach from our physical bodies and also our emotions. And we can be moved into a point where we're not using emotions in order to make decisions. And this is where there can be a similarity with the psychopath who is born with an inability to utilize emotions. I'm not going to go into schizoid neurology now. However, because schizoids haven't bonded with their primary caregiver due to lack of attunement, there can be some impairment to the oxytocin processing and it's not we're born with receptors that can't process oxytocin. And so the relationship with oxytocin between schizoids and psychopaths are different. This is an interesting point and it's something that I definitely want to explore in more depth in future videos. Because psychopaths don't have a need to detach from their emotions as a consequence of any sort of trauma or distress, like with the schizoids, they don't have to utilize defense mechanisms. Fiona Walker, she's mentioned that she doesn't experience withdrawal dissociation, splitting, and doesn't engage in fantasy as a coping mechanism. And also, she's not safety sensitive, as with schizoids. 
this means that she has a very different relationship with the physical world so she's very in tune with her body she's in tune with her surroundings and because she doesn't experience fear with schizoids do experience but often detach from she doesn't have the safety sensitivity that schizoids have I found her relationship with fear to be very interesting, the fact that there is no relationship. So she doesn't like to have imaginary fears about the future, like what could happen. She lives in the moment and she's able to go out into the world and explore it without any defence mechanisms getting in the way. It was interesting to see that we both had a low need for social interaction and are very comfortable or contented to spend time alone. The difference between us there was that when I interact with people for an extended period of time, I can become socially drained. Whereas with Athena, she didn't experience that. And she could get bored sometimes in situations. But other than that, she has not got any problem going into extroverted mode, expressing herself and interacting with the world in whatever way she chooses. This means that she's able to engage in interpersonal relationships without that detachment between the true self and the false self taking place. Because Athena doesn't experience dissociation, and she's in tune with her body. She doesn't experience the being on autopilot mode that a lot of schizoids do. And I also think from what she said that there isn't an issue with anhedonia either. I think that the difference between the schizoids using defense mechanisms to cope and psychopaths not using defense mechanisms to cope makes a big difference in how we interact with the world. I also thought it was really interesting how Athena doesn't fear punishment and a lot of her decision making is based on the outcome whether it's going to be positive or negative. I do relate to that myself because um, there's a lot of pull for me towards damage limitation However, with Athena, I think that was a bit different. But if you watch the video, you'll be able to see like exactly like how she explained it from her own personal point of view. So yeah, there were there were a lot of um, interesting things that come out. We went into a lot of depth in our discussion. So this is my main summary that came to mind after interacting with Athena on the differences between schizoids and psychopaths and um, yeah hopefully I'll talk to her again in future because it was really interesting and I'm sure there's more that we could cover in future.